Well, welcome everyone to Race Face edition of Race Face Spotlight. And today, we're gonna go up north to Dryden, Michigan. I don't know about you, but Dryden, Michigan in the middle of the winter time sounds awful cold, but that's where we're gonna find Katie Hedinger. Katie, how are you doing tonight? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing good. So, is it cold up there in Michigan? Yes, but it is getting warmer, so that's good. I think we just got most of the snow melted, but now we still got a little, but it's getting warmer. It's getting warmer. So when you say it's cold, what does that mean? Anything over 50 degrees to us Floridians is cold. Um, like 32 degrees or 38 degrees, that's like really cold, but it's been, it's been getting up there. Yeah, 32 degrees, we, we couldn't handle that. We'd be, uh, we wouldn't know what to do. So, so tell me, what's been going on over the winter since uh, the race season kind of ended up in 2019? What have you been doing to kind of pass the time? Um, well, I'm on a travel basketball team and a travel softball team. So that has kept me busy on the weekends and some of the weekdays. And then um, definitely my simulator. I've been going on that trying to go on it at least every day, but that's, yeah. So, so let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about basketball. What position do you play? Um, I'm a point guard. You're a point guard. So point guards are always the people that are in control of the game. So that's really cool. So um, tell us a little bit about the basketball. Where, where all different places are you guys playing at? Um, well, there's, it's like a league almost, but we travel a lot to a bunch of different high schools and stuff. And actually this weekend, we're, we have many different high schools that we're going to around Lansing, Michigan. And we might end up playing in at Michigan State University. So what's your favorite shot? Is it a jump shot, a hook shot, or you just go straight for the slam dunk? Um, I personally am probably going for layups because... <laughs> Yeah, because those are the easiest and the ones I can sometimes make. <laughs> there you go. All right. So uh, we, we have some. We see we found something that we have in common during this spot <laughs> you already, which is basketball. So are you going to be watching like March Madness, a lot of the college games that are coming up? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Who are you picking? Here it comes Michigan. Roll. Katie Henniger's pick for the NCAA Final Four. Who's your Final Four team? Michigan. Michigan, okay. All right, so let me ask something. We, we talked a little bit about, you know, kind of what's been going on at school and what you've been doing over the winter time. So I always like to ask all of the younger drivers this, what do your friends and teachers think about you being a race car driver? Um, well, a lot of my friends, they think it's really cool. Actually, some of them come to my races and um, my one friend, his whole family made shirts for me, they make Katie Hettinger shirts. And so they're all very supportive of it and they really like it and they think it's unique. And then um, I actually asked one of my teachers the other day and she said that she thinks I'm very strong and brave to be able to do that because she said she wouldn't think of me being a race car driver. Yeah, you should tell her, say, you know what I'm going to do for you one of these weekends when we're doing some testing? I'm going to put a seat in the passenger side and take you for a ride. What kind of ride. So, so let me ask you something, because I hear it from a lot of young drivers that a lot of their friends don't believe that they're actual race car drivers. Do you have any friends like that? Yeah, most, a lot of the boys in my grade, they didn't believe me. Like, I had to actually show them a picture. A lot of them were like, show me a picture, because... I always talked about like my dad racing. And then when I was like, yeah, I race too. They're like, no, you don't. And I was like, yes, I do. I'll show you. All right, so here, here's what we need to do. You need to, you need to tell your dad, Chris, say, dad, look, Rod came up with this idea that we'll just park the trailer like a block down from the high school <laughs> and I'll call the local police and make sure that it's okay that I fire that puppy up and drive it <laughs> one day. How cool would that be? That'd be really cool. All right, so what maybe a lot of people don't know about you is that you are a third generation race car driver and your grandfather was actually pretty famous. Can you share with us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, my grandpa, he like was really big into cars and he loved building and driving race cars. And so he was really 
big and famous because he drove some sprint cars and he show, drove some pavement cars. He probably drove a little bit of everything, honestly. And so he was really big in racing. And then my dad wanted to race. But the other night, my dad told me that he wasn't allowed to race until he could build a full car on his own because he had to learn how to do all that stuff so he could know how to race the car and how to fix it. And so my dad, he raced um, modifieds mostly. I grew up at the racetrack. I was only a couple weeks old when I went to my first race. So I have always been to the racetrack. And so I was glad that I got to have the opportunity to race also, just like my dad and my grandpa. Okay, so now we've learned two things that we have in common. You went to your first race when you were two weeks old. I think I might've been a little bit older than that, but this was way back in 1959. So you probably don't even know a lot about what was going on in 1959, even if you read the <laughs> history books. But my first race, my mom took me, she put me in a pillowcase because we were at a dirt track. And she said when it got real dusty and everything, she would flip the pillowcase over my head so that the dust would get on me. So things have changed a lot. So we, we, we're real short into an interview. We already have two things in common. That's really cool. The thing that you just said I really like, I, I think this is going to play a big benefit because I always see you post up a lot of stuff and I see you, that you're actually not just the driver of the car, but you work on the car quite a bit as well. Yeah, my, I've been, I feel like this year I'm more connected with the car almost because I feel like last year was like the first year and everyone, well, me and my dad, we were new to like, the junior late mile racing and everything. So that's why Bobby and all the guys helped us so much because they knew about junior late models and late models. And so they taught us. And I feel like this year I am working and learning more about the car as we get closer to um, racing season. Well, that's going to be a big help for to you as you get older because you're going to know what to ask for and then you're going to have a real good understanding of what type of changes they're making on the car, depending again on your input. So I think that's uh, I think that's really really cool. So are you are you really excited about the upcoming 2020 season? I am like so excited. Um, I'll be racing two cars this season. So I'll be racing a late model sportsman at. Corgan Oil Speedway on Friday nights, and then I'll be racing the juniors on the weekend. And I'm really excited because I grew up at Corgan Oil Speedway. Like my dad and my grandpa, they race there. So we know a bunch of people there, and now I get to race there. And I'll be racing with drivers older than me. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to learn and get, like, get more seat time and learn from their racing experiences, which will help me um, become a better driver. Right, I can already see the big sign out in front of the speedway where you get ready to walk in. It's eventually going to say the house that Katie built. <laughs> so I do know that you've got a brand new junior late model car. Tell us a little bit about that car and the chassis and everything. Um, so Van Doren Racing Development, they're um, one of my main sponsors for my new junior late model car. And Johnny and Butch have been so much help. I went down, we actually just took the car down there, my um, late model, we took that one down there so they could do their part on it. So we did ours and then we sent it down there. But for my junior, I went down there with them and Johnny was there and he's super nice. He's helping me get my seat ready and mounting my seat. And they're just super nice guys and I'm so excited to be working with them this season. All right, so give us a real short uh, difference between a sportsman late model and a junior late model? So my late model sportsman, it has a GM 604 crate motor and it goes 450 miles per hour and then horsepower. <laughs> yeah. And then my junior late model has a GM 602 crate motor and it has, and it's restricted and it has 300 horsepower. So I know that you've got the local track where you kind of grew up at that you're looking forward to, but your junior late model, you have the ability to go out to quite a few different tracks. Are there a couple of those tracks that you're looking forward to the most to be able to go and race at? 
Um, yes. So I was looking at my schedule schedule today for the 2020 season for my junior late model, and I don't think I've ever been to Kill Care Speedway. So I've watched some of those. I watched some of the videos and everything, and I tried to find some late model videos. And the track looks cool, and I'm really excited to try that track because I've tried the other tracks, and so I'm excited to try a new track like that. Right. And and you were you were saying earlier that you've been spending a lot of time on the simulator. So for for maybe some younger kids out there, or maybe some older kids that are out there, and even you adults that are watching that are not believers in simulators, tell us what you're learning from that simulator that you feel that you're going to be able to carry over until the real race car. I like at first I didn't think I believed the simulator would help me. But I've grown so much with my steering control and my throttle control. Like almost every day I practice a junior late model or a late model on at South Boston. And it's just amazing how much I've grown and how much I've adjusted to the track and how much I know where to lift off or get on or how much steering to use. So now I'm going to the online races and I'm driving at those tracks. I actually came in second the other day and I was like super happy. My dad was down there. I was like, wow, because I didn't expect myself to do that good. I mean, I got second, but it's better from where from me being new to the simulator. <laughs> right. And, and you know what? I think the more that that you look at a simulator as a way to train yourself and to learn a lot of people just look at a simulator and think it's a game, but I've seen your simulator. That ain't no game. You got the real deal, man. That's a pretty cool simulator that you got. Yeah, I was I was fortunate enough to have my dad be able to get that one. And, it's, yeah. and it helps a lot. Yeah, so I think you've got a sim simulator, correct? From Sim Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. One that Anthony's got, so that's pretty cool. So, um, not to put any pressure on you, but what are your goals for the 2020 season? What's your, what's your goals? I mean, what, what do you want to accomplish in the sportsman division? And then what do you want to accomplish in that junior late model car? In the sports, sportsman division, what I want to accomplish for the 2020 season is probably getting laps in and being able to run with the guys and try to stick with them because I'm not nervous but I'm excited because they're older than me and they're more experienced drivers with the late model. And so I hope that I'll be able to stick with them and maybe even get into some of the higher positions. And then for the junior late model, Michael, I got fourth in points in the 2019 season. So now that I'm more experienced with the car, I hope that it's like a new year. So I'm trying I hope that I get higher up in points or even finish higher up in some of the races. Yeah, and I think that you're gonna I think you're gonna have a great season. I always thought it would be kind of cool and you know you'd, you'd have to think about this a little bit, but you know you, you do race in, in a predominantly uh, sport that's dominated by boys and men. And, and I just think it would be really cool that on your back TV panel across the back of your car, you could just write, you just got passed by a girl. Bye bye. <laughs> Think about that. Think about how that would get in some of these guys' heads. They'd be like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? They'd probably hit the wall or something like that. But but anyway, uh, I want to give you a, a, a minute here to give a shout out to your sponsors. Um, my 2020 sponsors are Van Doren Racing Development, PXP Race Underwear, um, Turn One Steering, and K1 Race Gear, and Race Race TV. All right, perfect. So Katie, thank you for joining us tonight. So if you want to connect with Katie, go out to katiehanegerracing.com, check out her face or check out her uh, website, check out all of her social media links. You can go on to Facebook and Twitter and follow her there. Don't forget to go into the fan zone and click on keep up to speed with Katie and subscribe to her newsletter. So Katie, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Good luck in 2020. And I'll be looking forward to doing our next race face spotlight with you a little bit later in the season. Thank you.
Well, there you have it. What an amazing young lady from up in Dryden, Michigan. You guys are going to be hearing a lot about her in the upcoming season. So stay tuned and keep your eye out for the next Race Face Spotlight. Everybody have a great evening. Go out and support local racing in your communities.